so hello everyone i hope everything is working so today i will continue on on the black knight because yeah the black knight is cool and i decided i kind of want to finish him first instead of like finishing the carver because it's like much cooler character so this is the plan for today and also just now like it kind of occurred to me that i don't need to like prepare a 3d model for it to just get a reference for lighting and everything i can just like search for like a literally a black knight uh, reference and here i am have pretty much everything uh so yeah this is pretty much perfect especially since like the original black knight is black and golden with details so this is pretty much this in terms of colors uh, which is cool but first uh, I decided I will try to work on the values instead of like trying to... Do I still have the line art? No. I need to only separate the line art so I will have it for later. Well. And uh, basically I will try to like work on it and make it nice. And as always... Uh, if anyone has any questions whatsoever, uh, feel free to ask them uh, in the chat or feel free to also mute me or and draw alongside me. Like It's basically, it does not matter. So yeah, uh, just make sure you enjoy yourself and everything should, uh, everything should be fine. So instead of like... Uh, drawing i will be doing more painting today because i want to make this guy look a bit a bit nicer and also i need to fix some things because not every area that i have done in a drawing i feel looks okay so there will be slight adjustments here and there uh, and yeah this is pretty much this is pretty much all about it uh, and what i want to do today uh, so, for the stories, um, I have like a lot of bad news and a lot of good news, so all is kind of fine. The bad news is, like for myself at least, at least it, uh, it is a bad news. I got my eardrum, left ear, uh, ruptured. It basically did a pop when we were playing with friends. Uh, with flanks, I don't know if, if this game translates directly, like if this word translates directly, but the flanks basically is a game about drinking and uh, throwing stick at a can of a beer, trying to knock it, and if you manage to knock it, then you need to like run to the opposite team, need to run and to place it nicely uh, in the spot where it used to be, and then. Uh, and then, yeah, you drink. And one of the friends decided that, okay, the losing team will get a friendly slap in the face, which is, like, fine. Happened many times when I was, like, training some MMA and everything. And a friend of mine supposedly has, like, a perfect technique because the slap was not really powerful, but it was powerful enough uh, that my eardrum just would go pop and it just ruptured. So, yeah, this is pretty much all I have been dealing with uh, lately. And the cool thing is I have a little bit more time for, like, let's say, streams and everything now. Because I don't think I will be going to, to the gym and whatnot. Because I don't want to, like, damage everything more. And I'm not even sure if I can go to the gym. Because, like, a doctor told me I can. But while I was working out yesterday, it felt kind of odd, like... Maybe I was just like trying to, I was overthinking it, most likely I was, but it, it was kind of odd. So I don't know if I will be going to the gym, but if I want, it means I have a lot of more hours per week to actually stream and to, to do stuff like this, So which is kind of cool. I feel it might be in the end a positive thing, and yeah, yeah it's also kind of fun that basically one week slap and managed to like destroy my eardrum which is kind of fun but yeah and also i was walking uh, to the uh, i was walking uh, i was in a doctor's uh, place to like get everything checked and everything 
So the long story short is most likely it will heal by itself. So it is fine. But if it won't, then the operation is pretty expensive. But well, life just happened. And this is pretty much everything that I have to do. And for this guy, uh, yeah, so this is like basically over with the stories. Uh, for this guy, what I want to make is also I want to give him like the black metal armor feeling like in here, uh, but with something that is a little bit more like beaten up, a little bit more rough. So I don't want this armor to be like extremely shiny. I want it kind of to look a little bit more destroyed or kind of like seasoned in a sense in hell. So we will be able to see that it's not like a brand new armor. So it will be a little bit heavier uh, in appearance. It won't have like a lot of shiny stuff on it. Uh, which basically means like the highlights will be scattered. There will be like no a single like small highlight. So it won't look like something like this. Most likely it will be a little bit more like, like this. So I kind of want the roughness to be easy to be felt. And also I said that I wanted to kind of try the method of Konstantinos Kantaridis. Uh, but at this point I felt like maybe not this one, since this one is a little bit too complex uh, for me to like try new stuff. Uh, this one I will just try to paint nicely. And maybe I will use some tricks of Konstantinos. So I will, so I will see uh, later how I can like use his methods to to make everything look a bit nicer. But at this point I feel like just a casual painting will will be best just to also practice some like freeform rendering. So instead of like using tricks to render stuff, I will just learn a bit better how to paint stuff in the first place, which in the long run I feel is beneficial to the progress and everything. Which is kinda kinda cool. And yeah, if anyone also has any questions whatsoever or wants their art to get a like quick overpaint or a critique, feel free to like drop a link. Uh I guess on Twitch I don't think on YouTube you can do you can like drop links and everything. So uh yeah, then I will look at your stuff and say what I think about it. And maybe like overpaint it slightly if there is something that might need an overpaint, which is cool. And also I managed to make the OBS live stream work again, so I don't need to stream like the entire screen. I can like stream uh, Photoshop screen. It was like a small setting that I have no idea why has changed, uh, because previously I have the same setup in terms of settings, um, but now it works differently. So. Who knows how it goes. And yeah, from a little bit more personal stuff, like one of my best friends managed to come by to Gdańsk and actually my teacher, my former teacher that used to teach me when I was still learning how to draw and everything in Domin in Warsaw, which is kind of cool. He's a really cool guy and knows a lot of stuff. And I still think he is like one of the best craftsmanship, like one of the best craftsmen. I don't want to say drawer because it sounds kind of odd, but I still believe he is like one of the best artists that I know, Michał Sztuka, which is kind of funny because his surname is Sztuka, which basically translates to art. So he's an artist. And to this day, I'm kind of mad that he does not use like the art of art yeah, in social media, it will be kind of funny. At least it is for me. So, so yeah. But we managed to meet, meet, and most likely we'll meet several more times during this week, because he is on his vacations, which is also really cool. And yeah, this is pretty much. This is pretty much all. So now I will be just going like from the bottom to the top, uh, trying to render this fella and to make him look nice. I don't know how sharp I will go with him, so I will see how the rendering will go. 
and how all the forms will read. Maybe also I will experiment a bit with some brushes because as I mentioned previously, I have like a fuckload of new brushes and some of them are really cool. Uh, I like updated a bit the, the things that I have in here. So maybe I will just try doing stuff like this. Also, if you are like learning how to paint and yeah, basically this brush is really cool to make like the the beaten up like wooden, uh, not wooden, metal texture. Not multiply, but normal. So it kind of gives like this nice metallic feel to the surfaces you are painting. But yeah, when you are doing stuff like, let's say studies and everything, it's always a good idea to like experiment with the brushes and everything because this is like the best place to to actually learn how to do them. And also I have tried to add a chat to like a YouTube screen. So if anyone will like chat anything, it should appear like on a screen. So you will be able, able most likely uh, to like see what someone from, for example, Twitch writes and what someone from YouTube writes. If you are like watching on Twitch, if anyone is like watching at all. So yeah, but maybe it will be working. I tried to make it work previously, but it was kind of hesitant to start to work. But now maybe, maybe it will work properly. And also, I'm kind of not sure what brushes do I want to use for this guy. I kind of feel like using texture brushes will like really heavily on oh, the flow was really low. Uh, will like really heavily benefit this fella because of the metal textures. But on the other hand, I'm not sure if I want to use like really heavy brushes. I might also try like the method that a lot of Asian artists are using. So first like sculpt everything with like a really thick brush. I notice they tend to use this quite a lot. So like they make sure that every single surface is like properly painted and then they kind of introduce the organic a little bit more of the organic shapes to to everything that they do which is a really cool way of working and square and rectangular brushes work really well with this type of a method because they basically allow you to paint like in a low poly so for example if i were to paint an apple or something like this it basically allows me to quickly create planes which is nice. So yeah. And also those type of things tend to have a really nice texture. And having a nice texture basically means the painting will look a bit more interesting if we zoom out a bit. Because all the small details will like clump together. And most likely will form an interesting shape. So yeah, for the horns, I want them to be shiny. I don't want them to be like without any type of a texture. I kind of want them to be shiny, but like scratched. So we will be able to see the fact that most likely these guys sometimes are also using the horns, maybe not as a weapon, but maybe as a defensive type of a manner. I can imagine using something like this as, a, as some sort of a defense from, I don't know, attacks coming from the top. If you are living in hell, I have no idea what could attack you from the top because the ceilings most likely are not really high, but maybe something will do. And if you are fainting, fighting some like warriors, most likely you are taller than them if you are like a black knight, so. So yeah. So pretty much this is like the most interesting things that has that have happened have happened to me recently. And yeah. And actually the because this is pretty much my main topic at the moment, the the rupture in the ear. Uh, I was kinda like learning about it, just like watching some videos and everything. And it turns out that it is extremely common uh, type of a thing. Around yearly around as far as I know. 300 million people or something like this. Uh, just one source said something like this. Uh, continuously have like a ruptured eardrum. 
So, and a lot of them don't even know about it. So, yeah. It is kind of funny that you can go with something like this for years and not even know that you have like literally a hole to, to your eardrums and everything. But well, it's kind of a hidden place. And if maybe you are someone that when the weather changes have like an earache, or if you go swimming have an earache, maybe you have a ruptured eardrum. And you should get this checked because she's dangerous if not if not treated. So yeah. And even now I kind of feel like because I'm like 27 now, I feel like everything that I do to myself, I need to go to a doctor to check because I don't know. I feel like this is like the year when I started to fall apart slowly. I'm only getting older and it's also kind of funny because now instead of like looking through the premium accounts and games and everything, I look on the premium accounts in like private healthcare and everything. So I compare like, oh, this is like a golden type of a thing. It, it has like a better offer, whatnot, which is kind of, kind of funny. How priorities changes with like years passing by. Also for the design of this guy, I kind of wanted to have like this upside down crosses to be present on his armor. I feel this is the type of a guy that would use those type of the details on himself. And also I kind of want him to have like some ornaments on his armor. So he won't be like having extremely like rough armor. There will be some like parts that will be that will be decorated. So, uh, doing stuff like this is basically like making some scribbles. So, for example, in here, if I want him to have some decorations in light, scribbles will be like brighter, and in the dark, the scribbles will be like darker. Of course, I could paint like the literal uh, pattern, but nah, I won't. And I kind of need to also figure out how the geometry will behave in here. So for making a helmet like this, I can imagine like you make a half of it. If you are like, I don't know, a de demon, then you punch through the middle to make like two holes in it. And then you like make the second half and you just like, I don't know, somehow connect it together. Sometimes it's even worth thinking about how you would actually produce something uh, because sometimes it will force you to design in a little bit more unexpected manner manner in a sense and also adding this layer of be believability this is a weird word uh, adding this layer of believability to your designs can sometimes solve i mean not even sometimes can usually solve a lot of like problems that you might encounter while actually designing something. So it can make everything much, much, much easier. Because instead of like guessing on what you want to make, you can just say, this is done that and that way, it makes sense. And you basically have like a tool for yourself to like make solid decisions. And decision making is really important while you are actually trying to draw or paint something or to design something that is that is cool. So these areas will most likely be a bit brighter and a bit softer. And painting in black and white also is really cool because you can focus on one thing at the same time. You don't really have to overthink everything and it allows you usually to nail down one level of completion then to start nailing down the second one and you just go basically step by step and also there is the saying uh, usually i agree with it but i don't know if i 100 percent agree with it because i have seen people mess this up that if you have like a good values then the entire painting most likely will be good and this is true, usually, but still I have seen people to have like relatively good values in their paintings and then somehow they manage to like mess up the painting. 
which is kind of funny, but well, it happens. So I will try to like make a good values in it and then to add a colors to it. There will be not much coloring in it. And I sometimes even prefer to start with like black and white type of a thing and then to add colors to it. I feel the colors then are a little bit more natural looking. So this is like, I guess, just a preference. And if you are a demon, you need to have like a glowing eye. You cannot be a demon without a glowing eye. So yeah, glowing eye is a, it's a necessity. If you are going to be a demon. And glowing eyes usually are really like lame type of a thing to add. But, and like the only production that I know that really nailed down uh, adding red eyes uh, is Dark Souls. Actually in Dark Souls, if the monster has red eyes, it usually looks like cool as fuck. What is, what is really like nice to see, because usually this is a type of a detail that, that is just, that just a little bit bad. There's not much more to say about it. So it's nice someone managed to make it like in a nice manner, like really tasteful, tastefully, I guess. Because they tend to really put a lot of effort into their designs. At least this is the impression that I'm getting when I am looking at the stuff that the From Software is doing. They seem to care about their designs. Also for stuff like this, really often if you are painting uh, a creature like this, it's a lot about like suggesting details. So you don't necessarily, and I don't do not necessarily need to like paint every single thing, like every screw and whatnot. Sometimes I will just need to like suggest that something is happening in here. So a certain shape, uh, a certain texture, like when will appear and there is like a huge probability the, the entire painting will look a bit more interesting. And also let me search. Mm. Let me search for Black Knight's armor. So maybe uh, I will find a reference where the chest area is also visible. Mm -mm -mm. Because the guy that I have has uh, a leather type of a thing on his chest, and it's not necessarily bad. But if I can find a better reference, then like why shouldn't I? Mm. And also a thing that I can do is I can take a really old as painting, just look how they did it. This is like a way that is really highly recommended in the place where I work. Uh, and I can see why, because this is like basically solved, solved, solved ideas for values on what I can take. Also, as you can see, when I am uh, color picking, it picks colors because I am not painting in black and white. I am painting in proof setup. So basically, if you go into the view in here, you cannot see it, unfortunately. You can, uh, you have a proof setup and just take custom and choose gray gamma 2.2 because it will make everything that you paint, uh, like the values that you paint will will be displayed properly in the new new version of the Photoshop. And even in here, I can already see like that my darks should be a bit darker. So most likely this photo is a little bit, I would say, too optimistic. Maybe something a bit darker will do the trick a bit better. Because if you want to have like an interesting design, then going like really dark with the values and really light with them usually is a way to go. 
So in here, the first thing that I will do, I want to make sure that the entire chest area is properly lit so that the geometry reads nicely. There is this really cool smudging brush that I have that makes stuff like this lighter easier. Then I will add some texture to it. And I just need to like constantly remember about stuff like reflected light and yeah, a lot of stuff like this. So, but I can see, I can go much darker with, with the things that I'm painting in here. Uh, even though, even if it will be like a golden type of a details, still gold uh, tends to like reflect uh, to relatively dark uh, degree. So I'm making like a darker reflections with gold most likely will benefit how the, how the gold looks like. And even if I am like using the... Uh, how it was called? The dodge tool. It can make the metal look really nice and really shiny. Actually, a dodge tool is one of the best tools that an artist, in my opinion, should learn because it really quickly allows to make a really nice looking metal type of a feeling. Of course, I don't want to go to like a pure white. I want to reserve pure whites only for like the highest, the, the strongest highlights. So if I will make a pure light, pure white somewhere, most likely I will slightly overpaint on top of it. So it will look a bit darker. And you can see also how nice this painting is. The values are really cool, especially on the face and the hand. Like in here you have like this dark and almost white and in here everything is like really dimmed. It's just darker. And also from a funny things, or, or maybe not necessarily funny, but from stuff that is kind of like new to me, soon I will have to buy a new, uh, a new hard drive because it turns out throughout all the like years, I managed to feel almost two terabytes uh, of a drive with just painting stuff so i have quite a lot quite a lot of different files i'm not sure if i want to have this like lines i kind of dig uh, how they look like those like incisions and like the basic brush with like the hard edge and a soft edge on the side makes it really easy to be added to add it so I guess I will I will add those stripes so I, as I said I really dig the way how they look like and those areas will also nicely catch a bit of the highlights which is really cool these are like the small details and it really fits to the theme of like black knight i feel like a black knight would have those type of details it just like adds a nice uh, level of like detail of like believability a white knight not necessarily would have those type of a, of a details but i feel like the lines that are kind of like grouping together that are giving a little bit more dynamic feel uh, to a to a geometry are like a detail that a black knight most likely will use. I have no idea how hard it is to like do something like this in real life. If you are like a blacksmith, and I have no clue, but I can imagine it's not the hardest thing to do. I might be completely wrong, but I don't know. I feel there are like harder techniques to be utilized 
in blacksmithing. And here I want to make like a school. If you are ever going to design something and you are going to add a skull in on a shoulder armor, this is like the laziest thing you can like imagine. It is just basically like a lazy designing. But also it tends to look relatively nice, especially for monsters. So I guess it's fine to a degree. I feel something like this is much more interesting, like in terms of like a design, or at least I would say it's a little bit more mature. But sometimes if you are just going for like a cool looking stuff, still. Uh, school on a shoulder armor is the thing that you want to go with. I like this looks nice. And yeah, also the only problem with like geometries like geometries like this is, is the fact that they are a little bit more complex. So it's a bit easier to lose track on on the geometry. So basically, it's kind of easier to forget what is where and how everything should be lit. So it's one of the things that I want to work on now. So when I just give it a little bit more rest, and I manage to dex, I don't know, don't look at this thing for a week. So later, if I open it again, most likely immediately I will see if something is just not correct with it. And also I will have like a week a time to um, to maybe even model this guy in 3D because I started doing just that. I kind of wanted to remind myself how to use ZBrush again for like, I don't know, like I tried this many times to learn ZBrush properly. But it's always something coming up that basically makes it kind of impossible. And at some point I decide that instead of like 3D, I want to learn how to draw better. But in this case, I decided I want to try to model this guy and to pose him and maybe make some cool animation, not animations, make some cool illustration with him when there is like more than one of these guys. So a little bit more of a longer or a bigger project, side project, I kind of wanted to make in my spare time. And since, as I said now, I have a little bit more time, for something like this, maybe this will be the perfect occasion to pick a little bit of a bigger project to learn something new and cool. Oh, actually, lines like this on the shoulder armor look really neat. And they like direct the eye to a skull. also makes the geometry kind of more interesting. I'm not sure how the light would behave on surfaces like this. Again, this is a little bit more complex of a surface. So I'm not entirely sure how it would go. I can more or less make like an educated guess, but I will never be completely sure. And again, when I finish this like next stage, so when I finish adding those details, I will ask friends of mine for a critique. Most likely they will see stuff that I am not able to, to see now, which is cool. This is again, as I said many, many times, why you always should ask for a critique because other folks will just see stuff that you don't. Especially if you are looking at something for like many, many hours, then your eyes tend to get really tired with everything that they see. And there is a tendency to skip on, 
certain things. Like you know something is wrong, but you just overlook it. And at some point you forget that, that something was wrong. And then mistakes and errors appear in the artwork that you are doing. And you are losing on the overall quality on the of the stuff that you are doing, and it's not fun then. And also one of the reasons that I really wanted to learn 3D is to just get accustomed to looking at different geometries uh, with a different angle all the time. So then if I will paint something like this, it will be just easier for me because my brain will kind of be constantly like, bombarded with the information on how the stuff look in 3D. And in a long run, it is something that will benefit my understanding of space and geometry and everything which is good. The more you understand, the less you guess, the easier it is for you to paint. And in my case, I understand quite a, quite a lot, but I'm still doing a lot of like guessing, which is not necessarily the worst thing in the world, but definitely it is like slowing down the entire process of learning. Now I also kind of recently was thinking about if I were to change something uh, in the past. I kind of feel like I would try to learn a little bit more earlier, like back in the day when I still had like much more time than I have now. So I could like focus properly on fundamentals to put a, le a little bit more effort to them. Because even though I was teaching fundamentals for like uh, seven years or something like this, I still feel there is like a lot of the things that I should be like doing more to just be better at it. And I feel like it's coming together relatively nicely. The shoulder armor, I don't know why, kind of gives me a like a Egyptian type of a feel to it, like all those lines kind of forming like a hair or something like this are not in particular, in particular a gothic type of an ornament. I feel I will need to introduce some of the like spiky lines inside of it so it will feel a bit more gothic gothic like even maybe like adding the stuff like this just break the to introduce a bit of a different shape language might do the trick let's see Maybe even unlike spikes inside here. Oh, it looks kind of okay-ish. I definitely like this idea of the spikes. Of the armor to go over the eyes sockets. It looks kind of metal. Yeah, I like it. I will leave it like this. And I definitely got rid of the Baron type of a feeling. Also for stuff like this in here, I'm constantly trying to think about the, for example, the Warhammer artworks, because they tend to have a lot of cool black and white artworks, like masterfully done values and everything. So if there is anything that I am constantly trying to like remind myself about is, is Warhammer because their black and white paintings are absolutely top like the basically the best on the, in the world i would say i don't think there is other game there is another game that has so many bit like that much of a beautiful art to it like in in those manners warhammer 
absolutely slaps everything. Easily they are the best in the field. Especially the old artworks. The the newer one are a bit different in a feeling, but the, the old artworks are mm, are especially extremely cool. Also Warhammer stuff is one of the things that got me into drawing because back in the days I bought I mean I bought I I got as a present or I asked my mother to buy me a book that was like a fantasy creature like a bestiary of Warhammer the old world with a dragon on a cover and it had like tons of great artworks in it it was one of the things that got me into drawing in the first place because I just wanted to like draw and paint cool stuff and creatures so I don't know for how long I will be streaming today I don't think I will go for like two hours, maybe hour and a half. Because I kind of need to finish some other things today too. But yeah, we, we will see later. We will progress with it. And for areas like in here, I can suggest quite a lot of like, details. So it will look a bit nicer. In here I can also add like my favorite type of a detail. Like the small pointy arrow type of a thingy. It's always a shape that I really liked. To add pretty much everywhere. So this edge might get a bit of like a highlight to happen. Maybe it will look nicer. Yeah, also with, with values, the thing is, it's they are extremely hard if you want to get them like really, really right. And they require a lot, like tons of practices, of practice time, because it's sometimes hard to show the difference of a color, texture and material in black and white spectrum. I won't say it is impossible, but definitely it is really, really tricky. It is really, really hard. So even though I am trying to simplify something by like working on it in black and white, I still don't think it is like extremely easy thing to do. And to some degree in some like areas, it can be even harder to do, which is also like worth remembering are working at something just be aware of the method that you are using so it will make it easier for you and you will be aware that if you are going to use this method then this and that will be easier but that and that will be a bit harder which is like i think personally a good approach good way to go so for example if you just go straight with the colors then like choosing the color palette and everything might be a bit easier but it will be harder to like maintain your values if you are starting with values then maybe some color decisions will be limited a bit because we will think in a different like way i'm also kind of running out of the ideas on what i can talk about so if anyone has any questions feel free to ask them always a bit easier to to talk then or if anyone is interested in any topic in particular feel free to ask and then also it should be a bit easier for me to ask and in here for example you can see a little bit of an inconsistency in here i added some like circles type of things in here i added like i don't know why some spikes so if i want to make like a design that will look nice and consistent throughout the entire piece then i do believe you should like i should limit myself to ser like certain shapes so i won't have like everything everywhere so i can say like i don't know circles on the surface type of an areas and some sharp shapes only on schools and stuff 
cools. Yeah, I guess this was the way to pronounce this word. All right, this part. Uh, on this area, so there will be like a logic behind uh, the details that I'm adding. Uh, it's not the only way, but it's definitely a way that makes, I would say, a lot of sense. Because then when someone will be like looking at a design or would like to design something like in the similar vibe, then they will be able to understand the logic behind it. So they will see, okay, circles on the surfaces and spikes on the endings and, and sharp things. Having a logic behind something that you do is always a nice thing, I do believe. And yeah, and for example, in here, I do believe I could like, I should render everything like really nicely, like the entire form first, and then I should add those those cuts so it will make the entire thing look a bit more a bit nicer but again this just shows the lack of a practice and kinda the method like of guessing instead of like knowing stuff happens if i zoom out I feel it looks relatively okay-ish. I really want to finish these horns. And most likely I will go through like the entire silhouette, like I will paint over everything once. And then I will like take a step back, try to think a bit more uh, on the thing that I am doing, like verify it maybe with some friends, seek for critique and everything. And then I will try to like go over everything once again so it will be like not a one pass but it will basically be done in passes so like one pass over everything then the second pass over everything the third pass over everything and i will do as many passes as i feel are needed to make it look nice and in here reflected light so always a nice detail to add and it will get dimmer the further away it gets from the geometry. So in here stuff reflects lights. It kinda bounces back. The further I am, the further away I go, the less reflected light there will be. So something like this should do. And also learning how to paint horns is a really cool cool thing to do. Especially to like study the geometry of a horns, because if you at least once put a bit of an effort into it and you will just be even aware of the shapes that you can do, then like the helmet design and everything instantly gets much, much better. Because one of the things that a lot of folks at the beginning do is just to go with the kind of like the horns that I did in here on the sides. This is like the base, but the, this type of a shape, like the S shape. It's a bit more rare to be seen among beginners. So, yeah. It's cool to be aware of the stuff like this. And even it can be like a really nice exercise for you to do. So instead of like painting something in particular, you just try to like come up with some different ideas for some horns and whatnot. So here you have it. An idea for like a practice if you don't know what to practice. I guess I will need to like study this this area a bit more. So after like finishing the stream, I will need to model it in 3D see how it will behave, how the light will behave, because I'm, I kinda can guess, but I'm not entirely sure how the, the light will go, will behave in there, so. This is also a cool way of learning. If you have like something that you are not sure of, you just take one problem uh, out of every single problem that you have with, with your painting and you just study one thing at the same time. I feel like this. 
this should be brighter and the helmet near it should be darker I feel like this is the proper way to go with it yep it seemed to be a proper way this area can be a bit darker Mm -mm -mm. For the eye to make it a little bit more glowy, or something like this, maybe even like a ridge in here. I feel it adds a lot of character to the design. Nose should be a bit darker. Or maybe even this helmet part can like blend into a nose. This looks kind of cool. Hmm. I kind of like it. This area will catch a bit more light than most likely. Definitely an interesting shape. For like a helmet. And not the most obvious one. But I'm absolutely not sure on, on how the light will behave on it. It will kind of make the entire... Does it look okay? I am absolutely not sure. I will leave it as it is at the moment, like this, and then I will go back to it. I'm not sure if I like it. Also, I don't think I like this horn in here. Like, having horns on the shoulder armor is kind of cliche, in a sense, and I kind of feel it would go into a way of the horns on the helmet. I feel the shape was kind of taking quite a lot of attention from from the helmet and I kind of want the helmet also to be a highlight of the design actually even stuff like this would be kind of cool let me try this let me make a new layer so like the eye socket will be a bit bigger I definitely like the bigger eye socket Stuff like this. Dividing the eye socket into two halves. I have no idea if this makes any sense whatsoever in terms of like looking through through the opening. But it actually looks really good. I really like the way like what it does with the with the eye socket, like the elongated eye socket divided into two parts. With like this, this something going through the middle of it. We might be onto something, boys. And in terms of design, it even looks a bit cooler. Now he looks like a proper evil, I feel. The helmet is, is evil now. And it's definitely more original. I don't think I have seen like this type of a design previously. I feel it looks cool. Noise. Also, most likely the second pass, if there will be a second pass of everything like that I do in here, will be to sharpen up the areas like this, 
so everything would be rendered a bit tighter this is how it was this is how it is i prefer it much more i feel like this area will get a bit more light and in here i can actually actually make this type of a design now it is kind of like justified to, to do it like this it makes sense so it is like a horn but not really but it is like a shape that appears in a different other parts of the entire design which is good again consistency with a design is is a good thing to to have also what is also also what is also the other thing that is nice with stuff like this if you find a really nice shape and then you want to design more things for it so for example i would like to design his chamber or i don't know the environment when they are in where they are in uh, i can basically utilize the same shapes so everything will be kind of like tight tight together because i can imagine if you have like a blacksmith uh, in hell an architect in hell something like along those lines then they will kind of like work together on some on some stuff and they will like introduce a similar designs everywhere which not necessarily always is a good thing to do but it definitely is a logical and easy thing to do And if I finish this, this might actually be my favorite thing that I have ever done. I really like this shoulder. Now I kind of wonder if I want to have this like huge as horn on the armor. If I don't, like I feel. Let me move this guy. I feel like having something like this. makes it a bit more interesting and also I kind of need to figure out how I want him to hold this shield because what I was thinking is if the shield actually has well like this type of a shape I was thinking that his arm goes kind of like through in here like this and in here he will have claws and everything but now it kind of makes sense for me that this arm will be just like freely hanging and that the arm actually will go like this so it kind of is like a shield or like a giant claw or something like this so he can basically strike with this area it basically means that to make it appear a bit more naturally well that i need to like rotate it a bit so let's control exit control forward till then the let me just sketch it out quickly also this is another great tip in my opinion if you are not sure about the pose just make like a lazy ass sketch on top of it so this will be like the arm the arm so you can like really quickly verify what is where exactly it will be in here like the arm so like the arm will go like in here and i feel the this arm will be like more like this so like a claws will be visible in here 
I do feel it makes quite a lot of sense. And then in here, we want a collarbone, a small head. I kind of wanted this guy to have like a really small head. An entire chest area, relatively small stomach. Maybe this area will be need to be a bit bigger. Like something like this. Crotch, I feel that this part should be a bit taller. But it looks kind of okay if you just take it off. Uh, yes, but going back to the shield, then it means the shield should actually go more like this, so it will have a bit more thickness to it. And I want the hand to be visible. I do believe it is a cool type of a detail. What basically means that I need to paint a bit more. Well, well, that I need to paint a bit more in here. So there will be a bit more arm in here. Where's my... And that the claws will be visible in here. I don't need a lot of them to be visible, but just a suggestion that there are in here might actually be you know, but the entire arm now looks kind of short. I do feel something like this makes a bit more sense. Well, and this is why we have sketching. Without sketching, this shit will be impossible. And I need to remember that this area in here will be a bit a bit bigger. I kinda also am tempted to add to give him like some sort of a cloak. This is definitely a type of a monster that could wear a cloak. I'm not sure if I want this area to touch. The thing is that this this shape in here gets is really awkward. So definitely something like this in here. Whoops. Like recurring shapes. This school needs to be rotated. It will be more like this. Meant to be like properly placed. This leg will go a bit more like this. The cloth. The cloth I would add later. Oh, now it looks stupid. <laughs> and here there should be a bit more like this type of a thing. I could even add like a really nice Roach type of a design. There is this really cool artist called Kate Thompson. Thompson uh, that has a really cool design of a knight. Just let me let me search for it. This is also this is in a book like drawing undeads or something like this. This is artwork, and this type of a detail in the crotch area is kind of like adult I would say but this is also a thing that appeared in many many different armors like throughout the history so this guy is Kate Thompson really worth checking I, I really dig his stuff he has really great artworks and like the, the drawing itself is just great it looks really nice and has a lot of like cool unique designs to it so, I was kind of thinking about something like this. 
I guess I guess I won't add it. I kinda feel the head could be a bit smaller. And this is actually the easiest way to make character appear bigger. Just make the head smaller and boof. The whole thing is bigger. Now he's much more massive. So actually this shield kind of works like the, the arm protection and everything protection. He has like, he can have like the plating in here to protect like the, the armpit area. And again, since this is like a fantasy, I can imagine this entire armor to be a bit more bulkier. Than it's than it would be in a real life. So I don't think adding some stuff like this will like make it worse. It also makes this cool like shame of this like something like this. This area I really like it. Uh, so yeah. And for the shield, now I kind of feel the the design is a bit too simple. I can imagine a bit more. Maybe now even the horn in here makes a bit more sense. So this will actually like horn like this will actually protect, or maybe adding the the S shape to it as it is in on the helmet, like the shape like this like this part now will make a little bit more sense because if anyone were to strike above this thing in the shoulder it will be like an easy strike but having like some sort of a horn in here will make it significantly harder maybe I will add two horns so in here and in here so we will have like two horns four horns one horn also makes quite a lot of sense. It should be like thicker. And I was also like designing the other, uh, the other night because like one day I was like I need to draw some monsters. I just feel like drawing monsters. I was like okay, I'm going to draw one of these guys. I gave that one a double, uh, double horns on a shield. So I kind of wanted this one to be a bit different. But well, yeah. In here, let me first render this this geometry nicely. So let's simplify the form. Then I will add like the nostrils and everything. Let me follow the forms. Let's move everything a bit more. Basically in here, this area will be a bit darker, this area will be a bit brighter. Whoops, well, well, now let me add, like I really dig the elongated eye socket, I feel it looks, it looks neat. I feel the entire school now looks much worse that it used to look better, but let's try to continue. I'm absolutely not sure how, how the light will go on this area. Hello, Pocakes. You are actually the first one to comment anything and thanks. I'm glad you I'm glad you like it. So we got a first first commentary. I kinda now wonder if it appeared on a stream, like on a screen of a stream, because I have set up the the chat box, but I have no idea if it's working or not. I will need to do a little bit more digging to see if it does.
definitely this area will get a bit more light and then I can like justify this shape and yeah this is definitely one of the things that I will need to like whoa it does show holy shit Yo, can you see the chat box on a stream? It's disappearing relatively quickly. I will try to wait. I will try to make it. Whoa, I managed to make it work. Holy hell. Mm, always show messages. Done. And hello, Miko, and thanks, Mortas Champions. Mortas Champion. Also, you know, this is a cool part of having something like this on a separate layer. You can really easily adjust everything. Now the school looks that is kind of dumb. It does not look evil. I want it to be evil. can be evil in this a little bit more like alien type of a way, but I want it to be evil, definitely evil. And I want it to have like this, the same stuff over the eyes. It could be made like of out of two parts. So the first part will be like the top part. And this actually makes quite a lot of sense, I think. Stuff like this. Oh boy, uh, am I not sure about the geometry in this one? I will need to sculpt it. This is one of the things that like proves to me that I have no idea how to draw some certain shapes. Let me first nail down the no, maybe not. Maybe let's just make a nice drawing of it. So the basic idea is I will draw myself a box and I will try to draw this shield into like a box. So this will actually allow me to and get a bit more of a reference reference points into the stuff let's see how much how far i can go with with drawing instead of like escaping to a 3d bit uneven box but that will do so basically in here i want those parts to be which basically means that the middle line in here will go slightly slower, slightly lower, so it will go to this part. It will basically form like shape like this. Something along those lines. Then in here I will bring it back a bit. So it will go like this. And in here there will be like a nostril. This part will go basically a little bit more to a front, so basically it will touch front of a of this box and it will go a bit more to the inside. Now in here, I kind of want it to connect like this. I want it to connect like this. So let's add some thickness to it. Like actually make it like a blade. So it will, let's say, go out a bit, go out a bit. In here there will be like a nostril, a nose. Then this plane basically need to get a thickness. 
Okay, let's add the school first. Let's connect this. No. No, this entire shape needs to get higher. So it's a bit too low. It needs to get like in here. So then it will go nicer. This will actually be the path more or less it follow. And in here I will basically have like the, the front of a school. And it basically can form like this blade in here. Oh boy, my brain is not working today properly. I cannot think in 3D. This is bad. But it can go like this. And the eye socket will be like in here. It also depends on how I want to make the eye socket. It will go like this. This line is then not necessarily giving anything. It will go like this. Form. I don't know if if, if it gave me like the information that I needed. I'm not sure about this area. There is something like wrong with it. Do I want to... Do I want to sculpt it? Mm. Yeah, let me try to sculpt it. Wait, let me save this guy. Mm. I will start a 3D code and I will make a new window for the 3D code. Let's see. Voxel sculpting. Uh, I guess a sphere will be enough. Mm. Uh, add source. Window capture. Add source. New source instead. 3D code, code, add source, 3D code, done. Uh, can you see 3D code? And if yes, transform fit the screen. Why 3D code is so small? Like the window. Ah, it works somehow a bit weird as far as I can see. So instead of like, yeah, I won't add really cold window. I will add screen capture. Where it is? Uh, video window capture, image browser, display, display capture, add source, add source. Okay. It should be working. It needs to be above. Yeah, a bit of a ghetto way of doing it, but yeah, basically. I will do, show the x-axis, get away with the grid. This is the first time I ever do anything in 3D on a stream. So let's see how badly I don't remember how to sculpt. So basically what I can do is I can definitely reduce well, the samples, okay, I don't need anything that is like extremely top high tier quality type of a thing. And I can shape how I more or less imagine this, this thing to look like. Let me turn off the, the show symmetry plane, it is kind of annoying. And also a really cool thing is the shader 
and there is this shader that looks like this old thing. What is cool about it is that if you have any creases, it, it makes them look nice. So, do I need to clay? Is clay any good in? Whoa, this is powerful. Okay. Ashes. Default. Yeah, like square brush will be best. Uh, Whoa, I don't remember how to use it. Okay. Let me change it to something like this. Then, if there is like one thing I feel ZBrush is better from in 3D code than 3D code, it's like being gentle with everything that you do. 3D code is so brutal with like every stroke that you make. Then this this will be a disaster. Uh, clay. I don't remember when was the last time when I was like sculpting anything at all, like in 3D code. Like my first time sculpting in 3D code in ages. It's not the most complicated program in the entire world, but definitely requires some muscle memory. I should just take like a basic face of a guy. 3D code and just like modify it slightly. Okay, this part's like this. This a little bit more to the sides. The... I need to like. to have this shield on a second screen to constantly see what I wanted to do with it because I don't remember honestly what I wanted to do with it. Something a bit more evil. And then I will have to like add a second part with a jaw. So this is the shape, more or less, and the top part, definitely not, well, definitely not like this, I need to double crease in here, so it will go like this, and like this, and this will be a bit more to a front. Chisel? Does it do what I want it to do? No, the chisel does not do what I want it to do. Oh, it kinda does. So I want this area to be a bit more flat. The smoothing is extremely brutal in 3D code. Like, if you dare to smooth something, then forget it will smooth everything way too much mm. supposed to be a bit smaller I'm absolutely not sure about the geometry that I want to have in here 
kind of want it to be like laid down a bit more oh yeah something like this also one of the things that is extremely cool if you are learning to do anything in 3d is the fact that you will see how much you can adjust like one shape like how how many subtle things is happening in here hello roman uh, kind of good trying to figure out the shape for the for the shield because i have no idea uh, how to draw it how to shade it so i need to prepare myself a reference and i have no idea when i was where is clay i have no idea when for the last time the fuck where is clay i don't want the surface tool car vox vox clay okay that's not this Whoops. Okay. At least it kind of starts to look on how I intended it to look like. The problem also with 3D code, I don't know why it is. I have no idea why it is. Is it seems to always lag a bit. And I have no idea if it has anything to do with like the way this program is working, that the fact it is like on a on voxels, I don't know. But it always seemed to be a bit on the laggy side. What there was the oh pinch. This was the cool brush, I do believe. But please pinch in here. Oh yeah, the pinch can like do this type of a shit. Whoops. I managed somehow to make like the cut. I kind of like this shape too. But I like this shape better. Okay. Rape no, rape no. Chisel is a cool thing, but this is like a surface tool. But it, wow, it does not change the box layer to a surface, which is nice. Pinch, maybe this pinch will, okay. Okay. We are getting somewhere. A bit more heavy looking nose to the front entire like this area to the front now I even kind of can make like all the small details well, the problem is this entire part on the top needs to be like smaller because on a drawing it is a bit smaller later i will figure out the the facial stuff yeah, something like this i don't know then i wish I wish I would learn. I had spent like more time learning 3D back in the days. It would be so useful now. Thanks. Yeah, I was thinking about doing anything like special for 2000 subs, but then I looked how how much subs other people are getting like much quicker and I was like, meh, 2000 subs honestly is almost nothing, but 
I don't know if I should care about like the number. I mean, I like streaming. That's pretty much all that matters kinda for me right now in terms of like the importance for it. Now I have quality over quantity, so it is fine. Uh, okay, the this part will be extremely fucking tricky. Oh my god. Okay, new layer. Add. And oh boy, this will be hard to make this shape. Mm. Also, it will be cool if it would have like a school on a ship. <laughs> Now it looks really kind of dumb. It would be cool if the shield was like alive, like kind of alive, and that it would, could like eat and move and everything. So actually the, the shield will be dangerous by itself, just by being like, well. But it kind of makes me happy that this area makes sense, like in a back that it kind of could work the way I intended it to work. And the shape is relatively similar. But this is a thing. Sometimes I feel so much easier to draw something. Like when you draw something there, you can take a lot of liberties and you can really make it like look proper at the first glance, but then when you try to like bring it into a 3D space, then all of a sudden everything that you have done looks like shit. And it makes like no sense whatsoever. And this is what I feel is a really amazing thing about 3D artist, artists. That when they do something, they need to think about the geometry from like every single angle. And when they design something, they tend to adjust so much I can imagine. Uh, let me use this guy again. Let me pinch you. Like this. Well, it actually works. The pinching is really, really strong. Let me chisel. Chisel you a bit more. So now we have something that is remotely similar to what I want to achieve. Of course, with stuff like simple stuff like on the edges in here that something is not really right, I won't bother that much. Like I won't care that much about it because, like, because I want small, small, small errors and mistakes with with the geometry or something that I just won't avoid because I'm not skilled enough as a 3D artist to like avoid them uh, I was actually thinking about like removing those stuff because I, I remember the chart and it was a disaster in terms of like the quality I was kind of thinking about like restarting that series by removing it first and then and then actually trying to, to make something a little bit better because on the church I remember I was failing so hard it was not even funny the school now look, looks excited instead of like terrifying Yeah, but the thing is, for me, like, I know there are a lot of things that I need to work on, but simply there are too many things that I want to tackle at the same time, which kind of causes everything to, like, fall apart a bit. And in the end, I don't, like, train enough 
for the things that I know I should be training. And it kind of annoys me because I, I know where I have like holes where I kind of where I should spend a little bit more time. But yeah, it's just too many things at the same time. I think I'm trying to tackle too many things. Oh, wow. I managed to get almost the same shape as I wanted. Oh, progress. Now to make it a bit more angry. Jesus Christ, 3D artists are crazy. Really, artists are fucking crazy. Uh, I, I know that I had some like dumb problems that were like mostly related to the fact that I was drawing in Photoshop. And drawing in Photoshop uh, is like, is I would say a bit more problematic than drawing on a paper. Like on a paper, it's really hard for me to have like serious problem with geometry or perspective or anything like I know how precise I can be and how how much I can ignore uh, of those stuff but when I'm trying to draw perspective like hard perspective on in Photoshop I don't know my brain just goes into a no-no mode like I kind of feel then like I forgot how to like draw perspective like, it's just much harder for me to, to do it uh, in Photoshop. I have no idea why it is. Why even something happened, like a sub. Thanks to anyone who I guess subbed or did whatever. Okay, and now let's make the... Works. It does work. Okay, the spikes needs to be a bit thicker. Webs, webs, webs. Okay, we are getting there. It still looks really stupid. Mm -hmm. Splendid. No, not spikes. But when I see the teeth now, now it's a bit more easy to understand. Let me actually turn off the perspective and look it from the side. I would like this shape to be a little bit more forward. From the front it looks kind of okay-ish, like, maybe. I don't remember what I wanted to use, pinch. Okay, this was, this is, holy hell, call me a 3D artist now. Oh, I am a 3D artist. Yeah, this is, actually, this is kind of a cool concept, I do believe, like, just the idea of, like, shield beam, oh my god, oh, okay. Okay. Oh ho ho ho. Damn, this is sexy now. I have no idea why all of a sudden it works. Okay. 
it was not working like five minutes ago but oh this is beautiful it's exactly what i wanted to achieve let me see how much i can like push it before the program says uh -uh. and this is 3d code the thing with 3d code is it is cool, it is relative, relatively easy to use because it is voxel based. So basically you are not working with triangles, you are working with like dimensional pixels. And it kind of means you can do stuff like this and it will always like adjust. I actually kind of like it. Uh, and it will always adjust. So like the geometry is uniform throughout the entire thing. Uh, it's like just the amount of voxels matters in this case uh, in terms of like how in terms of how it like behaves uh, which has it like downsides and, and pros and cons and everything uh, it's definitely bazillions times easier to start using if you compare it to ZBrush, like Z if you open ZBrush for the first time, you have no idea where the fuck you are or what the fuck to even press to start sculpting. In this case, ZBrush is an absolute like mystery. And even though I have been using ZBrush for like, okay, quite maybe not a lot, but I got accustomed to it. Every single time when I start, I need to like go through a basic like reminder on how do you even start in ZBrush? Uh, 3d code is more like okay tools everything works it's kind of like foolproof it's really good for like a uh, hard surface type of a stuff uh, and now they also made a new version uh, which seemed to be like much better oh, now this oh, 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 oh i am a 3d artist now holy shit this might be my best scope that i have ever done to date let me save this bad boy uh, save us. I go desktop. Cool. Save. Okay. Uh, yeah, this is sexy. Now. Now, actually, let me open the Photoshop. Let me. Uh, grab the screenshot of this entire fella so I will be able to more or less match now I am kind of tempted to do like the entire character in there uh, but let me go to the render tab and how the hell do you choose the environment expo Okay. Uh, add light. Uh, density. A lot. Be like the strongest light. Okay, it does not do. It doesn't work. Uh, sculpt. Presets. Shaders. Metal? No. Maybe this looks kind of okay-ish. Let's see in the render. No, it does not look okay-ish. Uh -huh, okay, the intensity is way too big. Don't show this message again. Let me take something that looks metallic. But it's not like a full blown explosion of light. Uh, light height. Oh my god. I think we have like something a little bit more from the top. 
rotation angle okay real time render okay if you turn off real time rendering it is much easier to to use okay this is more or less more or less the angle behind the angle a little bit more more from the front can i change the the what the silhouette I have no idea what it does. Uh, fly scattering. I don't know. Okay, can I change? Or this bad boy? No, 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 no. Cool. Let's go to, to this bad boy and for render metal. This is this metal. Okay. So the angle more or less looks like this. Now I see where, where it is kind of different. Uh, can I change the size of the sun? Light scattering for sun intensity light no 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 and okay real time renderer uh, intensity of my one light source because i don't want the environmental light to affect it that much or maybe i do okay slightly uh it gives a bit more ideas is there maybe like a material that I can like? Yeah, I guess this will do as a reference. I was kind of close, even now I, when I look at it. With the thing that I decided to paint, so yeah, let's be lazy. Print screen. Uh, let me go in here to Photoshop. Display capture. Poof. Here you go, Photoshop, okay. Here I save you, goodbye 3D code. And welcome. Our new friend, the shield. Let's see how far off I was. I was really fucking close. So now do I want to be like lazy lazy? And do I want to just like adjust it and paint over it? Am I this lazy? Uh, yes, actually I am. Uh, we need to evolve our methods to make things work better. So now what I need to do is I need to change the the exposure now i also kind of see the chat placement is a bit unfortunate because it's going over the layers but okay bad luck now i need to kind of reduce the amount of light on it okay control u make it a bit Yeah, you know, but I think at this point I should work harder instead of smarter if I want to. Like, I get it that you should work harder instead of smart. Oh, you should work smarter instead of harder, but sometimes you should work harder instead of smarter if you really want to see the improvement. If you really want to improve. Okay. Okay, let me adjust this the shape of the bad boy. Mm -hmm. Yeah, but I'm kind of happy with the fact that I was relatively close to the desired effect. That maybe I was not like perfectly close, but I was close enough 
for the thing to be called a success. And let me divide the i of it to two parts. I kind of like the trend of a design like in here. So we have this edge and I kind of like those guys to appear. Let's be, oh, Photoshop is really choking now. No, 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 it's kind of full. Uh, let me like, and those ridges in here. And the inside of a face must be darker because otherwise it will look kind of goofy. And also for like working smarter and not harder and everything. Yeah, I usually totally agree. But in my case, I again, I feel I should work harder instead of like smarter because I was working smarter for really smart for a really long time. And it kind of made me rely a lot on the tricks instead of like just knowing how to do shit, how to do stuff. So uh, this is kind of like double edged sword. And yeah, this is why now I'm kind of more willing to just work harder. And because I have like a relatively good reference in here, what I want to do with the highlight, because my, my light source is much, much smaller. In this case, this area will be more looking like this. This because this edge Yeah, like in this case in this case the harder was to sculpt this bad boy because the as I said I'm not a, I mean now I am a sculptor, I am officially a 3D artist because I managed to make like a skull and it, it looks fucking lit. I really like how it turned out. This is like the best skull that I have ever done. Uh, is definitely like has the, the evil vibe to it. So now officially I am a 3D print 3D artist. So yeah, this was my harder for today. This edge. And I am really, if, if there is anything that I'm really proud of is this design of the, the eye sock, the one on the helmet. This is, I reserve it. This is mine. If I will ever see anyone using this design on a helmet, I won't allow it. It's mine design. And the sole owner of it. And most likely like tomorrow I will see like 10 year old artwork having something like this. And it turns out I did not invent it. It will be like, I just somehow like remembered seeing it somewhere like 10,000 years ago. Most likely this will be the story of me being original, but I like it. I, this is like one of the more interesting things that I have designed in a really long period of time. And I want the reach to be in here. And the entire thing will have a bit more of like a reflected light. Why am I using a basic circle? If I have like a better brush that will make it, that will make a better impression of what I have painted previously. This is actually kind of funny because at this point I believe I could like just model every single part of this night and just bash it together into the end paint over it. Maybe I will do the next one this way. Like I will try to model him in 3D. Maxim Bazenov, I believe this was his name, uh, sculpts in VR. And then he paints over it and oh my god, he is good. Like let me, let me show you his artworks. Let me just quickly go. Because this guy is on another level. Well, let me go to display capture boom. This guy, extremely, like his art is like mind blowing. For example, this guy. This is absolutely overpowered. 
and yeah he like the quality of everything and this is like a 3d model that he did and he painted over it and oh my god this is good and this is also one of the things that i wanted one of the reasons why i wanted to get like the oculus because in oculus if i would see everything most likely i would be able to do a bit more interesting things in classic 3d i kind of sucks but most likely it's not a tool it's like the the magician but yeah gravity sketch so it looks really fucking neat uh, clay shard shaders in blender and then an overpaint and boom definitely one of the I would say one of the most impressive artists that I know. He does not have qu like a lot of artworks in here, but you can see that the quality is just like on another level. I was also thinking, like I was talking with him and I invited him to art talk, but he said that he is not really good with English uh, while talking. So it won't happen at this moment, but maybe in the future or maybe, I don't know. I will ask a friend of mine to translate everything in real time. So <laughs> we'll see how it will go. But yeah, definitely a guy you should really follow. Uh, it is lit. It is cool. So. Yeah, now looking at this, make it look kind of bad. <laughs> this is always the eternal struggle. Oh my god, I am streaming for over two hours. Okay, I will wrap this up soon. Just let me add some textures to it and because I wanted to do a little bit more things for my work too because I still need to make some sketches because I was waiting for a really long time for a feedback in the morning. Maybe not a long time, but I still have some things to do. So let me hit the two hours mark and we will wrap up the stream. Definitely a thing that I need to work on in this one is the the sharpness of the lines, the clean cleanliness of the lines, cleanliness. So for example, this shape will be a bit more like obvious. Because in here they are kind of flat. I kind of like the way that they are protruding in here, that they are not like extremely flat, but maybe I should kind of flatten them a bit. Something like this should do the trick. And in here they can form like a small spikes. Dun, 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 dun. I also got quite hungry right now, so it's also a good, I believe, good hour to stop streaming. Make a break for food and go back to work. Yeah, but painting over 3D is really, really pleasant. I always liked it. Damn, I am proud of this shoot. It looks proper evil. This will be the darkest and the blackest night in the entire history. I also now to need to kind of redesign the helmet. I don't like the... This... this something. Let me just quickly... Also... Get a grip on it. And that... Turn off the opacity let me search for like i feel something like this will make it fit the the general vibe of what i do have yeah i think like a horn in the middle 
is a way to go with this bad boy. Making the eye socket even bigger. And taking back this line a bit. Making the eye socket a bit smaller, so the nose area. Push back a bit more the nostril. And to give it like a proper in here. Maybe even something like this. No, I don't like the triangular triangle shape. I feel something like this still looks better. But I did not like the, the ridge, like connecting with the nose, with the nasal features. Mm -mm -mm. Yeah, I feel the helmet now fits much more the rest of the design than the side of the this neck protection also needs to be adjusted. The chest requires let me just make a note, a visual note so I will remember. Requires this to happen. And this also requires this to happen. So it will actually actually look much nicer uh yeah so basically do i do i copied what i have had have had previously i did so let me make the screen a bit bigger so we will be able to compare the progress on this fella So in two hours, I feel this is like a really nice, nice jump. If we, if I were to say, I also need to figure out on what he's standing at the moment. It's some like organic goo. Most likely I will change this to be like, uh, like rocks, skulls or whatever, or a body of a knight or of a warrior. I don't know. There is still something that is not right with this shape. I, I don't know what, but later I will think on it. Uh, so yeah, thanks for watching. And I hope the, the chat is working on the screen finally. So everybody can read everything and like the, the Twitch can interact with, with YouTube. I need to figure out if I can add the icons to it. Let me just search, just look quickly on it. So there will be visible who is from source. Uh, shutdown source, refresh bro, no, 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 control, no. Visual, no, font, no, chatter, no, no. Okay, never mind. I guess I can't. Uh, yeah, okay. Thanks for watching and I hope you enjoyed the stream. Uh, most likely I will do the next one in the um, Wednesday this week, but I will see uh how how the life will go because quite a lot of people now uh, like i want to to meet with quite a lot of people and yeah see ya to the next time